All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Life of Mission class. I'm Edmond from Manila, Philippines, and here with me is Sina from Hong Kong. Hi, Sina. How are you? I'm fine, Edmond. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to have the chance that I can share my conviction with my Asian families. Yes, in our lives as well. Yeah. And as an introduction uh, in this class, uh, let's have some sharing about our lives. Uh. Uh, can you tell us more about yourself and the ministry that you're serving, Sina? Yes. I, in 1991, I started my own company and I got married. Mm -hmm. And then in 1992, I got baptized and I promised Jesus is my Lord. Wow. Yeah. One year later, then I have my firstborn, John Quill. And two years later, I have my second angel called Naomi. Mm -hmm. So during the 2000, year 2000, I started my, uh, the ministry called the Women Under the Cross. With Elizabeth's leadership, we can make it for the whole church. We started with 40 people, uh, but uh, over 20 years, we are over 150 sisters. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are married women, stand alone in the, in the kingdom, uh, including widow, including elderly, including the divorce or single mom. Wow. Which is, yeah. <laughs> so in here in the middle is Elizabeth. Without her, we cannot uh, have this ministry for the whole church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other than this ministry, I'm also serving in my own sector. It's anti-North sector, uh, the group called Anna's Group. So we have 23 beautiful sisters and mm -hmm. mature uh, in the kingdom. So then uh, we are we have already running this ministry for over 10 years. Wow, that's great, Sina. Really great. How about you, Emman? I would like to hear from you. All right. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm currently leading the singles ministry in ICOC Manila. Uh, uh, this ministry is about more than 90 uh, single brothers and sisters. Here's a picture taken last uh, 2019 in the conference held in Davao City. And here is the last picture taken uh, before the quarantine uh, lockdown began here in Manila, Philippines. Uh, where we had uh, encouragement for all the sisters. We gave them roses. And the brothers were singing. I was there in the middle. Okay, although not all of them are there. And this is the time that we had uh, just before the lockdown began. So this is the last time we've been, we've been together. So for uh, it's a great singles ministry. Awesome. awesome. Now, uh, Sina and I, we've been serving in the ministry for uh, quite some time. And I've been serving in for 15 years, seven years in the campus ministry and eight years in the singles ministry. And I believe you've been serving for more than 20 years now in the ministry. And we know that life of, as a disciple is really tough. It's really hard. And we've been, uh, we face a lot of challenges. Now, can you tell us more about the kind of challenges that you had faced, Sina? I love to share because um, God has made all the adversity into blessing. As I mentioned, in year 2000, I started to lead the ministry for the women under the cross. But the serving the kingdom doesn't mean that your life is going to be more smooth. So in the year 2006, then uh, my company went bankruptcy. Because at that time, the Hong Kong economy is very bad, was very bad. So many people went bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So two years after my bankruptcy, my husband decided to leave the family. Mm -hmm. chasing after his own dream and women. So God is so faithful. And he has really protected my business, enabled me to raise up two children and my elder old mother. My mother passed away three years ago in the year of, uh, he, she was 93 years old. Mm. So my two daughters has become Christian two years after my divorce. Wow. I can really say it's only a miracle from God that they, are, they said to me that they saw, uh, they can witness the difference between Christian life and non-Christian life. So they would like to follow God. Amen. So here they are in the yellow color that the, the beautiful angel is Naomi. And now is um, 
she is in the mission team uh, in China. And the white one is John Quill, my elder daughter. And she got married two years ago with Davis and they both are serving the Hong Kong ministry wow. as an intern, yes. Wow. I'm so glad that uh, my family is serving God. Wow, so it's a great family there, really useful <laughs> before God. Yeah, it's got perfect. <laughs> yeah, inspiring family that you have. Oh, yeah, thank you. How about you? You also, I heard that you also faced uh, some adversity before. Yeah, let me share with you some pictures. And I was, uh, I'm 22 years old as a disciple right now. And when I was nine months old, a very long time ago, <laughs> I was confined to a hospital for three full months okay? uh, because my body was paralyzed uh, because of the spinal cord injury that I had due to a vehicular accident. Okay? Actually, I have a metal brace here on my neck, still there. And uh, forever, it will be there. I'm actually like a cyborg now. <laughs> and I remember every day, the disciples in the hospital came to visit me every day to the point that the nurses there in the hospital named me as the patient who has lots of visitors daily <laughs> because they were <laughs> visiting me every day. My family was so impacted by the love and care of the disciples that even my biological sister there in the middle, became mm -hmm. a disciple when I was still in the ah. hospital. She was, she was baptized in the second month of my staycation in the hospital. Wow. So that will happen uh, many years ago. Fast forward 11 years, uh, this sister of mine joined the church planting in one of the provinces in the Philippines. So she joined wow. uh, the, the mission team, okay, mm -hmm. church planting in the Philippines. So, she left her work and resided in a city where we don't even have a relative. We don't know one, we don't know anyone, and we, she doesn't have any job there. She literally became a missionary, and I was not a missionary, so I thought. Now, since this sister of mine uh, was a, school primary, a primary school teacher and a secondary school teacher as well, she asked my younger brother here in the picture on the left uh, to help her out in her school staff perhaps checking a lot of papers because that's a job of the teachers. Uh, later, my, this younger brother of ours uh, became a disciple too. Wow. And this brother of mine led the singles ministry in that province. And just last month, he, he got married. And uh, I'm not yet even married as his eldest uh, among the siblings. <laughs> now, now, the Lucena Church grew from this mission team to this much after 10 years. They actually celebrated their 10th anniversary just a few weeks ago. Uh, they have grown this much. So somehow this is somehow this became a part of the fruit of my adversity because my sister became part of this mission team. It's awesome. It's awesome. God is great. <laughs> yeah. So what I saw here is our light shines not just by telling the people about the good news, but by doing the good news as well. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Now we move to the third part of our uh, class, so Life of Vision Mission. Uh, I want to ask you a question, Sina. Uh, when it comes to mission, what scripture comes to your mind? Yes. I really love uh, Timothy uh, chapter 4. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Mm -hmm. I love this scripture because I think being a Christian doesn't mean our life is better. But I'm pretty sure that uh, our God has given us solution from his word as mm -hmm. soon as we follow them. So... I would like to continue to preach the word, no matter it's good time and bad time. Wow, that's great. I really believe in that. I agree with you. <laughs> Thank you. And how about you? Uh, me, it's here. It's uh, when Jesus said, peace be with you as the Father sent me, I am sending you. Uh, this is what Jesus told his disciples. Okay? And today I believe this is what Jesus is telling us to Jesus was sent for a purpose, and so are we. That makes us all missionaries. 
Do you consider yourself a missionary too, Sina? Yes. I think Jesus uh, sent us to this world also for different purposes. Yes. So I, I consider myself as a missionary. Mm -hmm. Other than the ministry that I'm serving in Hong Kong, I have uh, another insight this year that I will send to China. So mm -hmm. here is my purpose. Yeah, my mission in China is to uh, seek and save the lost. Wow. Shepherd God's flocks and train shepherds for season singles in China. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. Huh? Yeah. And how about you? Me, I believe uh, I am sent to teach and train the younger disciples. And especially that I'm working now as a professor in a university in Manila. The students are my harvest field since uh, I'm quite acquainted to a lot of students. They are my mission field. This is what I believe. Wherever God put you, there is your mission field. You need not be sent in faraway places to become a missionary. Okay, wherever you are, in your workplace, or wherever God has put you, that will be your mission field. In my ministry, I serve as a leader, as a teacher, and a shepherd as well. In my workplace, I invite the campus disciples, campus brothers and sisters to do Bible talks in my class. And here are some pictures that we held. Bible talk in my class is perhaps the most amazing and fun-filled class that I had back then awesome. um, before the quarantine. And this is when some of the brothers and sisters from U.S. Had, had a missionary journey in Manila. So they joined uh, the disciples in Manila. So I invited them to do Bible talk in my class. And they enjoyed and as well learn from the Word of God. So these are okay. some of the pictures there. I remember conducting a survey to several students of mine. I was surprised to what I found out. For about 200 students, I learned that a great majority of them do not even read the Bible. Wow. <laughs> that alarmed me. So I endorsed them to some of the brothers and sisters and the campus ministry to do some Bible studies. And from that time on, the uh, campus ministry became so busy doing Bible studies to some of my students. So that I believe my, you know, my mission is it's awesome. <laughs> that, that school, that university where God has placed me. Now I heard uh, there are some challenges there in China in doing some mission in China. What are the challenges in doing the mission there, uh, Sina? I am in. Before I share the mission challenge in China, I would like to uh, show you a, a video. Hello, Hello team. I'm Sina from Hong Kong. This is Karen from Beijing. I'm Rola from Beijing. I'm Selena from Shanghai. <laughs> I'm Jerry from Chengdu. See you, See you soon. Soon. Hello, S2. I'm Gary. Come from Shanghai. Hello, S2. I'm Kitty from Bali. I love you. Hey, I'm Steven from US in Qingdao. All right. So I, I am in Hong Kong. So it's very easy and free to have a Bible talk, to have activities, and to share the gospel. But in China, this is not the case because Chinese government has their own churches, which is under control, and they have to know what kind of preaching they are going to give. Mm -hmm. So our churches in China are underground churches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we come to the street to share the gospel, we have to make sure that the visitor uh, really have a seeking heart. Mm -hmm. uh, until they show their serious uh, heart, then we will bring them to activities. So it means is uh, we have to be very efficient and very safe uh, in order to protect the churches in China. Yeah, it's really hard. Huh? Yes, I have to learn. I have to learn from the beginning. From the beginning. Yes. Yeah. And how about you? Your uh, for me, hmm? uh, I, I, let me share with you. Uh... A challenge more of internal challenges as season singles. Okay. Now, we as season singles, we've been around for 
quite some time, really long time. That's why we are consistent. And we experience a lot of failures, uh, some of us heartaches, and some of us disappointments. Yeah. And we get tired in continuing the mission of God that's placed in us because of this. Uh -huh. And some of us has stopped dreaming. We began to focus more on ourselves and forget that we have a mission to do in life far bigger than ourselves. Mm -hmm. However, our failure should not stop us in fulfilling God's mission. So we can rest for a while if we need to, but after that, let's pick up ourselves and let us go. As it is written in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So I believe that's an encouragement to every season singles out there. How about you, Sina? Can you give an encouragement for our season singles out there? Yes, I would love to. I really um, like the scripture in John 21, verse 15. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Dad. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my land. And then he asked for two more times to Peter, do you love me? Take care of my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. So being a seasoned single, I've been blessed by Jesus for years. So I would like to follow Peter's step to feed his sheep. So then I would like, uh, really, this, this will be my mission in the coming years. Amen. Yeah, that's a really good mission. So in closing, uh, I want to share with you that uh, mission is everything the church is sent into the world to do. Mission is something that God is doing in the world into which he calls us to participate. In the end, we are all missionary season singles. So let us fulfill the purposes to which God has called us to. Amen? So Amen. thank you for joining us in our class uh, this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed uh, learning and uh, uh, listening to our sharings this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.